this. There you go. So we have our senior engineer, uh, Maria Rosales Ramirez. If you can just turn on your video real quick, Maria. And we have also Courtney Clark. There you go. We have Courtney Clark, our supervisor of treatment plan operations over here at San Jose Creek, who's an expert in everything water reclamation plant. Actually, they're both experts. But um, well, we have our A team, I'm telling you, it's gonna be good. So any questions that you have, please put them in the chat. I mean, put them in the Q&A feature that's listed down at the bottom of your screen. You're gonna see two little chat icons that say Q&A. And then, or if you wanna ask your question live, like if you wanna actually say your question, ask your question, you can just use the raised hand feature. Um, and the raise hand feature will also be located at the bottom of your screen. Or if you're on your tablet or mobile device, you'll probably find it on the top right hand corner. So use that and that way we'll have all the questions in one place, but we love hearing your voice. We wanna make this as interactive as possible. If Maria's going through something um, through our tour that you want a little bit more clarification on, please feel free to put it in Q and A and I'll, we'll try and see if we can get Maria on time. Um, if we don't get her on time, don't worry. We'll make sure to ask that question at the end of the at the end of our tour. So I think with that, um, I leave you in good hands. So Maria, go for it. Take us away. Good morning. Thank you, Genesis. Uh, thank you everybody for being here on this Saturday, lovely Saturday morning. Uh, as Genesis mentioned, my name is Maria, and I work for the Public Information Office. I am very excited to you know do today's tour. So let's get started. Uh, before we realize how where we are today, we kind of have to look back on how we started. And back in the times before you and I, or even Courtney was born, it was very common to collect the sewage, but to dump it straight out into the ocean, out in the Santa Monica Bay. And obviously it's, it's you know, totally egregious now thinking about it, but back then it, it, was, it was very common. So this is an actual picture that we have of raw sewage being dumped straight into uh, the Santa Monica Bay. So obviously it was a, a great hazard to the environment and to the public and uh, citizens got with their, with their uh, public officials and out of that concern, this was stopped and the Sanitation District Act was passed that enabled the Sanitation Districts, our agency, to be formed in 1923 to, to collect, treat and manage sewage uh, for LA County outside of city of LA. So when you think about us, I want you to think of us as a special district. We are not city of LA, we're not LA San, we are not LA County. We provide the service for LA County, sort of like a school district, a special district. So since then we've grown, our mission has grown. We now serve 5.6 million people. Pretty much you can see here, like you know, outside of city of LA, all the way as far north as the Antelope Valley, all the way, west to Malibu and Agora over here, all the way south to the PV Peninsula and right up against San Bernardino uh, County line. So we serve, you know, 78 cities, you know, unincorporated territories. How do we do that? We have a network of water treatment plants, water reclamation plants, and you can see them here in yellow. Um, this has been over time, we've, you know, kind of grown over time. Our first facility was the Joint Water Pollution Control Plant in Carson. And over time, as our, as our service area grew, we've kind of expanded along with that. So the first question, um, oh, so our plants, we have 11. We treat about 400 million gallons of wastewater a day. And just to put things into perspective, the average person uses around 70 to 80 gallons a day. That's around four bathtubfuls. So we, treat so much water, we deal in millions of gallons a day. Today's tour is going to focus on San Jose Creek water reclamation plant, because that is happens to be our largest water reclamation plant. So um, we are very, very proud of our facility. So that's why that's being uh, chosen for today. So the first question I want to kind of bring up is, how does the sewage get to our treatment plant? And this is where our sewers come in. Sewers are the venue for the water to leave, the wastewater to leave your home and the businesses and come to us. So for us, it's very important to make sure that our sewers are flowing freely, that there's nothing blocking them. We have about 1400 miles of sewers, trunk sewers uh, that we operate and trunk sewers are large sewers. 
there's sewers, let me back up a little bit. The sewers, the laterals that belong to the homeowner, then some belongs to the city. Those are smaller ones. But we, Lord, we own the large sewers that kind of bring the water to us. So we are collecting water from wastewater from most, a lot of cities. And as you guys can see here, there's a lot, you know, there's, they're, they're huge. And our job is to make sure that they flow, flow freely. So uh, thank you to our, to our sewer maintenance crews. They do an amazing job. So the sewer comes to, the sewers bring the water to San Jose Creek, which is our largest water reclamation plant. A wastewater treatment plant treats water so it can be introduced into a larger body of water, but a water reclamation plant is a specific. Those words mean that that water is gonna be used, reused for something for a, for a very specific purpose, not just discharge into a water, water body. So San Jose Creek is our largest water reclamation plant, but the names makes it sound like it's one facility, but I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. There's actually two independent facilities. We've got San Jose Creek East, and San Jose Creek West. If you've ever driven down the 60 and the 605 intersection, you might look at something like this. That is what you're looking at. San Jose Creek East uh, began operations in 1971. And as you can imagine, as um, the city and LA County grew, there was more need to treat more water. So then that's when San Jose Creek West was added, I believe in 1982. And then we had a second expansion back in, in 1993, just because it keeps them growing. But, this facility does so much considering it's in such a little tiny space. Now, I wanna hear where you are coming from. So I want you guys to drop in the chat what city you're from. So we could see if San Jose Creek is serving you guys. In the meantime, oh, well, there we are. We're here. This is a, this is a, the, I guess the service area for San Jose Creek. And I'm always amazed when I see how it all the way from La Cañada, the water can come to San Jose Creek. Remember the sewers, are actually connecting us. Let's see, Walnut, Covina, East Hollywood. Let's see, yeah, so all Pasadena, some of that water is definitely coming to us. Oops. So notice, again, remember that the sewers are keeping us all connected and San Jose Creek does an amazing job of treating the sewage from all these facilities 24 seven. A sewer, um, a water reclamation facility plant never stops treating water. So how do we treat the water? What happens at San Jose uh, Creek East? If we were doing a live or in-person tour, which we used to do before in the days, you know, the pre-COVID days, we would have walked down from our, we would have parked here and I would have walked with you guys and started here. We're, we would have been walking this way. What we're seeing here is kind of like, our, obviously an aerial view of our plan, but where we're gonna walk and see today is what we call primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment. This is what makes us a water reclamation plant. These are the standard process for a water reclamation plant. And we're gonna walk through each one today. So um, this is a schematic of kind of the, 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 the process. Again, we have a, a primary secondary. I want you guys to remember there's three basic steps to this and we don't need to get into this. I'd rather show you guys what happens. So let's take a look. All right. Step number one is to bring the sewage up to surface level. Why? Because sewers actually flow by gravity. They're kind of slanted to, so the water can flow down. So by the time the water reaches San Jose Creek, the water is 30 feet below ground. So we got to pump that wastewater up. So I would show you guys, this is our influent pump building where we have four pumps that lift up the water to ground level and then the water is able just to flow through our facility. And now we start primary treatment. Primary treatment is a, is a, um, a process that's, a, it's pretty much the, the dynamic here is gravity. It's led by gravity. We rely on sedimentation. We let the water flow very, very slow so that anything heavier than the water can sink to the bottom and anything lighter than water like can skim off the top. The water is flowing through these channels that you notice are covered. So they're going from right to left. Um, these channels are what we call our primary, our settling tanks. They're about, I don't know, maybe 300 feet in length, uh, maybe 12 feet deep. Um, and the water just flows very slow. What we're doing here is pretty much simulating what mother nature does. Um, notice that our tanks are covered. Why are they covered? Obviously for us, for the sanitation districts, it's very important to be a good neighbor. So we obviously don't want any smell. So our tanks are covered. Um, so that, you know, no unsightly smell 
go escapes. Um, Genesis, do we want to take a look at that question? Uh, it, it can wait a little bit. Well, yeah, I think. We'll okay, awesome. So primary treatment, again, I want you guys to think gravity. Now, if we were walking, we would have walked right up until here. We would have stood right here. And then I would have asked you, do you want me to open the lid to show you what's in there, what's under the lid? And half of you would have said no, half of you would have said yes. So now it's the time where you thank me that this is a virtual tour because well, I'm just going to open the lid. This is what raw sewage looks like. This is the truth. This is when water comes to us. This is what we're going to see. I know it looks yucky, but I think it's important that you guys look at what, it, what we're starting off with only so that you can appreciate so much more what, what the sewage is going to work once the water, once it's clean, what it's going to look like. A lot of times people think that the water comes with a lot of solids, but it's a lot of suspended solids. Every time that we use the restroom or we shower and we wash our hands, we're introducing more and more water. So this is how the sewage comes to us. Now, if I was to open the lid more, now we're gonna see all this gunk in here. We see gloves, Gatorade labels, sticks. I'm not even sure what that is over there. And this is where I use my PSA. Toilets are not trash cans. The drains are not trash cans. This stuff shouldn't be here. This stuff should be flushed, I mean, thrown in the trash. Why? The sewers are designed to carry liquid. So every time we have a lot of this gunk, it can look really um, affect the maintenance of our, it can get caught in our pumping plants and that can lead to, to overflows that can back up in your home or in a larger scale uh, in the city. And definitely that's something we don't want. So now it's my PSA time. Um, this picture right here is from uh, Long Beach Main Pumping Plant, is one of our pumping plants. And this is a 12 foot long, 80 pound of gunk that we had to pull out of our sewers because we were cleaning our pumping plant. And obviously this is not something we want. So we are here to educate the public and remind you guys to only flush the three P's. P, poo, and toilet paper. Those are the items that are designed to be in the toilet because they fall apart really easily. Anything else doesn't really belong. Um, I gotta say, if there's an unofficial fourth P, if anybody wants to be brave and put it on the chat, I'll give you guys a minute. Let's see if anybody takes it. No? Okay. Genesis, do you wanna tell them what the fourth P is? Oh, we got it. Bobby oh, you did? Awesome. Well, <laughs> they Bobby, said it? Yeah, Bobby Burke says puke. Exactly, yay. Thank you, Bobby. So remember the fourth P, I mean, the three P's every day, fourth P, I hope you're not sick, but fourth P. So those, that's my PSA moment. Let's get back to our tour. So if we look under this, under the lid, this is what we would see that are items that are like kind of lighter than water, like skim, but how, what happens here? So this is simulation. Underneath the tanks, we have a system of chain and flights, which are the chains here. And we have these paddles that are scooping anything that settles to the bottom. We call that sludge. It is not trash. It is actually, this has a very important role. We're gonna cover that towards the end of our tour. And then on the top, as the, the flights are kind of coming around the top, they actually skim off the scum on the top of the tank. So scum would be something like fats and oils, grease and wax that are into the system. What we really want is this middle water, this middle area. Um, by separating the water, just in the process of gravity, we remove about 60% of, of the pollution and the water can then move on to the next step. All right, so step number two, secondary treatment. This is where the magic happened. Whereas uh, primary treatment was a physical process, gravity is a physical process. Secondary treatment is a biological process because we are using bacteria. Let me play my screen. We would be walking through this pathway right here, seeing it in all its glory, um, activated sludge. Uh, secondary treatment uses bacteria. We use bacteria to be able to break down the organic content, the carbon, the nitrogen, the phosphate in the sewage. And once the bacteria eat, um, eat it, decompose it, it kind of stabilizes the waste. Now, I, when I first walked or came to the districts, I thought we'd, we'd just go, you know, the water flows this way. But actually, I believe there's every four channels is a, is a, is a, it's the process. The water's here four to six hours. And I want to, let's put it stop here. I want you guys to notice something. Here is what we call the bubbly chocolate milk. So you guys will remember. Here is bubbly and this here is not bubbly. Why is that? Um, we are able to control the kind of bacteria by, introduce, by introducing uh, air, oxygen into the system. And 
by controlling the amount of oxygen or the lack of oxygen, we're able to target specific kind of bacteria to target specific uh, compounds. So that's always, I always thought, find that fascinating. So we tend to associate bacteria with bad things. I got sick, I got an infection, now COVID. But bacteria do a good thing for us. And this is where the bacteria lives. These are our aerated tanks. Notice that we're bubbling it because we're trying to keep the bacteria happy. We've, we're giving them all the oxygen and all the carbon, all the food that they could possibly be so that we create so many trillions of uh, microorganisms so they can treat the water, um, all the water that's here. How do we do that? We have at the bottom of each tank, you can't see it right now, but at the bottom we have a system of that collects air and we have diffuser plates that kind of push air through and then create bubbles. Oh, I love this slide. This is a little example of a nematode. This is one of the microorganisms that is, you know, is actually, this is actually footage from our lab. We have a lab on site and we're able to see the, the, the little critters right here. And again, they are happy. They're doing what they need to do. This is one way bacteria, you know, they do some, they're doing something good for us. So there we go. Here's our little nematode worm. They're doing what they need to do. Uh, but now they've, you know, after four to six hours, the bacteria have done what they need to do. And now we have to ask them to leave. How do we do that? We now the, the water moves through what we call um, our secondary clarifiers, which is would be step two of our secondary treatment. Notice how the water looks so much clearer and you can see something kind of dark at the bottom. The activated sludge, the mud where the microorganisms live is heavier than the water. So just by letting the water flow very slowly, the, the, the sludge will sink to the bottom and only on the clean water kind of stays on top. So we just collect the water using uh, weirs. The water, we just kind of collect it from the top. So now we've kind of separated the water, we've removed um, solids and we've removed uh, organic content. Now we move on to tertiary treatment. And again, this is what makes this a water reclamation plan because we're now treating the water further because it's going to be reused. Um, the primary treatment processes that we use are filtration and chlorination. So this is a bird's eye view of a filter. Now when you, you see the water coming here, but it looks really dark at the bottom, what's going on there. Here's a close up of what it looks like without water. And why is this black right here? Our filter media has three components. Um, the top one is anthracite coal, and then we have sand and gravel beneath it. So I want you guys to think of this as a giant Brita filters. Some of you guys may have a Brita filter. I don't know if I ever had one, but I know what they are. So you would put the water in there and the water would just kind of go through the media and um, go through, kind of trickle in through the, to the bottom. This is exactly what, what's happening here, just in a super large scale. Um, this is nothing new. This is what happens out in nature. You have the water flowing through a river. The water also will sink in and mother nature, like through the riverbed and mother nature will clean the water also as it, as it, go, it gets soaked into the ground. So filters do really, really cool things for us. And now the water is ready for reuse. So in 10 to 12 hours, we go from yuck to yay. I don't know if you guys are impressed. Look how the water came in all you know, dirty and now it's super clean. What do we do with this water? Well, sanitation districts has been recycling water since 1962. Um, and for us, it's become a really big part of who we are. We kind of evolved from being, you know, just managing the waste for LA County back in the 20s and the 30s. Now we've actually gone in the 60s, we've come to like kind of resource recovery, recycled water. We want this water to, to do something for us. So the main ways that we recycle this water, just not just at San Jose Creek, but overall in all our facilities are agriculture, industry, landscaping, groundwater, and environmental. Um, the most popular one that people see are probably the landscaping. Anytime that you see a purple sign out in the street, it probably says recycle or it says um, recycled water because purple is the color of recycled water. So that's a super super popular way. Um, out 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 in the uh, Antelope Valley, we use it to water fodder crops. That's crops for cattle. We also have a lot of industries that use water as part of as part of their industrial process. They also use our water. Landscaping. Um, for San Jose Creek, uh, if you guys are familiar with the area and in, in, from Whittier, uh, Rio Hondo College uses the water to water their, their campus. 
uh, Rose Hill Cemetery uses the water, uh, California Golf Club, and a lot of cities use our water just to water the, the plants, the landscapes, the parks, the golf courses, because why use potable water when you can use local water? Um, the one I'm excited to show you today is groundwater recharge. So groundwater recharge, what is that? Um, this is a picture, a, a nice drone shot of the St. Gabriel Coastal Spreading Grounds. That's for those of you that are kind of familiar with the area, these would be these large grassy fields that are west of the 605 freeway, like south of Beverly, I believe. Um, at this place, we actually put the water, it's kind of like a little lake, but the water table is so it's high that the water just like sinks into the ground. So we are recharging uh, aquifers. We are putting back what we used. And again, mother nature, just takes the water and does what she's been doing all this time. The water gets cleaned as it goes through the through the soil, and somewhere downstream, many years later, they can use that water as as a uh, for their use as a, at a city. So this is an awesome, awesome way. We've been doing this since 1962. The other the other use I wanted to show you guys it's recycled water. This or recycled water supports um, habitats, and I love this shot. This is um, an aerial view of San Jose Creek that gets its name from the San Jose Creek, which is this little river right here. And I, I, I don't know, I love it because you see the water is being produced here, and we discharge it into the San Jose Creek um, to support the the habitat. And this is the California Golf Course. So the water here is also being uh, um, irrigated with with the water from here. And we are gonna enjoy this moment of nature. This is, um, yeah, I had to tell one of the operators to do this for me, but this is the water being discharged into the creek. So you can see the little animals are actually excited that more water's coming their way. And I would just let you enjoy this for now. Lovely. Oh my God, the little birdie. I know there's a little duck. Yeah. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy that. That's probably one of my favorite parts to see of this presentation. All right. So the story, you know, we kind of follow the water. We know where our recycled water goes, but the story's not over yet. We are not going to talk about the solids because there's actually more. I always say it's not trash until we say it's trash. And Maybe you guys will feel differently, but I think this is true. So remember during our primary treatment, we talked about the sludge. And I said, remember, that's going to come into play later. Um, not at San Jose Creek, but at another facility in Carson, our Joint Water Pollution Control Plant, we collect all the sludge from all our facilities that are connected um, via the sewers. So all the way up from La Cañada, Pomona, Los Coyotes, Whittier Narrows, they're all, we, they all send their sludge to Carson. Why? Because that is still a resource. So we send all our sludge over here. The solids are processed in um, anaerobic digesters. I always say, like, picture like cow stomachs contained or like in these concrete tanks. In there, we have microorganisms. Again, this is another way that bacteria play a, a beneficial role. And these are just empty tanks, but they're huge. Like, this little board right here is probably six feet. So they're huge. We just put the sludge in there and after, I don't know, maybe 14 to 16 days, the waste is stabilized. By sealing the container, we've removed the absence of uh, aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria come to rise and they break down the organic content again. Um, in doing so, they, pro they produce what we called biogas, digester gas, and that is um, routed to our total energy facility in Carson. This is a, pretty much a facility that makes electricity from that biogas and it's been doing that since 1983. Um, actually we produce so much you know electricity from this facility that uh, we use it all in our facility and we have some extra that we actually um, put it on the grid. Some homes around there are actually using um, you know green energy from from people flushing the sewer so how's flushing the sewer flushing the toilet so how cool is that? But the story's still not done. What happens to those biosolids, those digested sludge? So after we know we've put the we've put the sludge in the tanks, we let it sit for 14 to 16 days. The biogas we collect, there's still a little bit of stuff left over in the tanks. What is that? We call that the, the digested solids. They are actually then um, dewatered. And what we have here is a, a centrifuges. They kind of separate the solids from the water by by spinning them, kind of like a washer machine. 
and we are left with what we call chocolate cake. It looks like crumbled cake. Um, this actually is a resource, believe it or not. What do we do with it? We, are, we truck it over to our composting facilities where we actually make kind of like a soil amendment. We work with several different uh, biosolids reuse sites. And this is just a few of them. Our, our largest one is Tolori Lake Compost up in Kings County, but we also work with um, Inland Empire Regional Composting out in San Bernardino County. And we mix this, the biosolids with agricultural wa waste, it contains a lot of carbon, and we make what, what would now be um, compost. So we use it for fertilizer. And again, we probably fertilize uh, fodder crops with this to, to feed cattle. So that happens, it doesn't happen here, it happens up in Antelope Valley. So with that, we, I hope you guys realize, I've shown you that wastewater is not, it's not, it's a resource, it's not a waste. We've taken what people think of sewage and we can make recycled water and also green energy and also compost. So with that, um, I hope you guys enjoy the presentation and now it's time for my favorite part, the Q&A part. Woo! That was a lot. That was a lot. No, it wasn't a lot. Maybe I'm biased. <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to jump right into the questions. We have a few questions in the Q&A already. And just a reminder, if you want to add any question, please put it down in the Q&A um, located at the bottom of your screen. Or if you want to ask your question live, please use the raise hand feature and we'll call on you immediately because we would love to hear from you. So um, let's see. So first question is from Carolina Corona. Will the recording be posted or shared? Yes, it yes. will. I'll take that one, it's a softball. Oh. <laughs> oh yes, it will, it'll be posted immediately. Um, as soon as we get off, we'll start downloading it and then you'll see it on our YouTube channel later. So I will share our YouTube link our YouTube link for the channel so that you can go follow us and you'll be updated whenever the whenever the new video is uploaded. Yes. So, uh -huh. No, I was just going to say that um, a lot of people I know they can't watch the recording or the, the tour live, but we make the recording available you know, yeah. so people can watch the magic all over again and then you can leave me a YouTube comment. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, oh, OK. So another one before I get started with the rest of the questions. Um, there is a, there is a poll. We appreciate your feedback and we're always looking for new ideas, more ideas on what you would like to see for the next one. Um, we could only get better. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> uh, so please, I'm going to launch the poll so you can rate today's tour. And then if you have any additional feedback, please email info at LACSD.org. And again, we love hearing from, from you. So Please feel free to do that if you have any additional questions. Okay, moving on to the next question. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Before we move, we move, we need to introduce our special guest. Oh, yeah. We have a special guest, guys. I kind of introduced. I know, but you're here to... in the morning if he's a little shy right now. But we have. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to put it in the gallery. Good morning. Good to see him. Hello, how are you doing? Hey, so that. Of course, Courtney Clark, our supervisor of treatment plan operations over at San Jose Creek. And so he'll be able to answer anything specific. I wanted him to introduce so we can send him all the hard questions. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we got, no, I got the softballs. Yeah. <laughs> I can't take them, I got them. No, all right. Fine. So, <clears throat> all right. So, first question um, <laughs> Do all brands of toilet paper disintegrate the same way? Or is one brand better than the other? Man, I wish we were sponsored. I have an answer for this. Unless, Courtney, you want to take it down. I have an answer. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. From personal experience, I had a situation where I had to actually replace the lateral from my home because it got, God knows what happened in there, but we had to be replaced. There was a lot, actually, I had a lot of root damage. So the older pipes in the homes from, especially the older homes here where I live are made out of vitrified clay and they're segmented together. So when okay. those, those segments actually get, um, they can deteriorate over time. And if you have a lot of roots, they kind of go towards the water. And as the roots grow, they can break up the pipes even more. So we had to replace our pipe. We had a plumber come out and I said, what can I do? Why did this happen? And he did say that, um, 
Angel toilet paper, the, the brand Angel was um, one that that could disintegrate the fastest. So thank you. Exactly. For, okay. I'm not sponsoring. I'm just telling you what happened to that me. That was TMI. Okay. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no. Um, well, is it because they're like the cheaper one, like the ones that like break? Well, you know, you have different kinds of toilet yeah. paper. You have like yeah. double ply, extra strength. I mean, it you just know, needs to fall apart. As long as it's toilet paper, just use toilet paper. We're okay, happy. we're gonna take this to the next level. Thankfully, I'm prepared. So this was my my little project that I had. I put toilet paper in here back in 2018. You guys can see it here, and it literally you shake it and it falls apart, right? Just looks like cloudy water. But there are things that don't fall apart easily. So this is a, a flushable wipe that's been also here since 2018. And I'm gonna shake it really good and it's still not falling apart. So um, I would just say anybody who has concerns of what belongs or doesn't belong in the toilet, do this little sample test and you'll have your answer right there. Yes. All right. Thank you for the question. Next question, Genesis. As long as it's toilet paper, you can put it in. It'll clear yeah. even two ply. Um, you might have to shake up. the jars a little harder, but it'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> They'll disintegrate. OK, so um, so Bobby Burke, he has 10 points already from guessing puke earlier this tour. All right. So Bobby Burke has a question with the continually increasing production of plastics. How do reclamation plants adjust to filtering out microplastics? So microplastics are a, a hot topic right now, but they are actually are removed through the wastewater treatment process because we saw how, you know, we're actually separating the water from the solids. They kind of get removed there. Thank you for that question. Cool. And by the way, let me just say, um, we got Jorge Marquez who said a bidet is a good investment too. Oh, I see so. that too. Thank you. Yeah, you cannot go wrong with a bidet, although it takes some getting used to. Okay, so next question. What are the impacts of the solid treatment plant, of the solids treatment plant for the community in Carson? Does it impact our health? From Andy. No, so the Joint Water Pollution Control Plant has been there since 1928. I mean, the operations have been going around, I mean, pretty much unnoticed. Um, the solids process, the solids treatment process, it's pretty much all contained. Those tanks are sealed, nothing comes out. And in addition to that, we have a very robust odor control uh, program in there that collects any kind of headspace or any space um, so that the odor is actually not, uh, doesn't become, it just, it wouldn't be a part of, uh, you couldn't even perceive it. Sometimes you even drive through there and you, didn't even, you don't even know that our facility is there. Okay. So no impact, I see. It looks beautiful, by the way. When you drive by, it's you can't even tell it's a treatment plant. Okay, so uh, next question. This one was so great. I'm just kidding. That's me. But it says, <laughs> is there any chance for a La Cañada virtual tour is the question. Oh, interesting question. Um, Patricia Baker. I don't know, Courtney. What do you think? La Cañada? Uh, <laughs> sure, that can be set up. <laughs> We can, you know what, every year we look at our public tours and we kind of see which ones are the most popular ones. Um, and then we'll have that, we have a calendar ready for next year. So 2022 by January, we should have our, our tour calendar. So I'll make sure I'll make the, the suggestion to our bosses and they can tell us yay or nay. So Genesis, make sure you put on the chat um, our tour webpage. So that, that's where we would actually list the dates for, for next year. Yes, I will put that in the chat. Um, and also I'll put the YouTube one in the chat. All right, so the next question is, and we do have a lot of footage from La Cañada too. So, okay, so what is finally, what is the final product trucked out of county? Are any more local composting locations going to be open? This is from Desiree. So you're asking if what the trucks leaving LA County are, you know, I don't know that information, but I do know that the facilities that we have in place, we've been in partnership with them for, you know, for, for a long time. So I don't, unless we find another use for biosolids uh, local, they would be, um, we we're going to be staying with that. I, I do want to point out that biosolids before, so probably in the, I want to say 90s, they used to be landfilled. And um, we don't need to get into that right now, but historically the landfills were kind of always running full. They would kind of fill up too fast. So by being able to, to use the biosolids and 
reuse them to make compost, we're actually also freeing up our landfill. So what we want is a, a, a sustainable way to manage biosolids. Okay, great. And our next question is uh, from Bobby. How can flushable wipes be advertised as flushable when they obviously do not break down? Oh my gosh, Bobby, thank you. All right. So I am happy to report that they just passed this law. I wish I knew what it was, Genesis, but they just passed a law that they would standardize. Um, they would actually create standards to designate what is flushable and not flushable. So there will be a logo um, that in every single package and all the all the packaging for any product that's lab labeled flushable would have the same logo. What's been happening now is that we have um, uh, there's just no standard. So different manufacturers can call what it, you can call something flushable, but doesn't mean it's flushable just because it fits through the toilet doesn't make it flushable. What makes it flushable is if it's compatible with our sewer system. So there's actually um, uh, there are a lot of uh, wastewater treatment plants and agencies got together to kind of lobby for this. And that just passed, I want to say, the beginning of October. Yeah, so it's AB 818, and yeah. it requires for all packaging to display do not flush warnings. Yes, and then they will all have the same um, logo. So the logo will be consistent across the industry. That's very cool. So <clears throat> going on to our next question. And remember, if you want to put it in the Q&A, that's great. And then you can also put it on the, you can also use the raise hand feature. All right, so next question is, um, so great presentation. She said that, all right. Okay, so just curious, how often do you have to replace the activated charcoal hue filters and what happens to the used filters? I know, Courtney, that seems like a you question. <laughs> That's definitely, it definitely. we're going to. Right. So we replace the anthracite and the uh, filters pretty much once a year. Uh, we take it every time you go to clean the filters, <clears throat> we do a backwash process where we lose a little bit of the anthracite, uh, which is like the, the coal stuff. So uh, we take measurements every year and replace the amount that we lose. So pretty much once a year. How often do you do the filter backwash? Uh, we do them as needed. So when we have uh, extra flow, like from storms and stuff like that, you get extra uh, extra storm flow in the, into the plant. That will require, require us to backwash more often, but normally it's pretty much once per day, uh, 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 once every 24 hours, pretty much. Can you explain a little bit more what happens during a backwash? Uh, during a backwash. Okay, so our secondary effluent goes from our uh, biological, biological process where we have the secondary sedimentation tanks, that water then travels to our tertiary, which is the filtration, and then we go along with disinfection. But in the filtration process, that water comes in uh, through gravity, it goes through the uh, different layers of filter, the anthracite, the sand, the gravel, as the uh, picture illustrated. Uh, but then that stuff starts to, uh, all the particles and things that, it, that it's trapping and, and, and cleaning from the water, it starts to fill up that anthracite and sand. So we have to do what's called a backwash. So basically think of pushing water reverse through the bottom, uh, stirring it up with air, an air scour. So we use a lot of processed air uh, to uh, suspend that that those particles that are trapped they're suspended now in the water and then pushed up to the surface and then that water is uh, that what we would call bad water uh, is then uh, travels and gets pumped back to the sewer which will eventually go down to Carson for for solid tank. Right. Thank you Courtney. I'm gonna use that Perfect. for the next tour. Thank you. Awesome. Um, <laughs> you're worth every penny. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so next question. How does storm flow affect the plant? Oh, uh, well, it, it, it's regular. Usually it's just rain, but the, the extra volume of water makes it difficult uh, to treat the water that actually needs to be treated. So, uh, for example, at the east, our design flow, let's say, is uh, 62 and a half MGD, but on a, on a which is millions, millions of gallons per day, MGD, millions of gallons per day. 
But if we're having a storm, like let's go back to California, if you remember El, El Nino, uh, between the both plants, we were probably pushing over 200 uh, million gallons for that day. And that makes it hard to, to run through the normal uh, processes uh, efficiently. So uh, you'll get a lot more, the high flow from the, from the storms is also kind of cleaning out the sewers pushing that more into the plant where we have more solids we have to deal with. Uh, the, the filters can't handle the uh, ec extra turbidity that's coming in the water. So they plug up faster and then we're not able to backwash them and clean them as fast as possible. So uh, the worst days for us are our rainy days. So when we see those gray clouds come in, we're like, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah. It, 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 even though it's storm water, again, uh, it does have effects by the extra volume of water that we're getting. Uh, limits the efficiency on the, on the processes. Awesome. And we just got a, we got a message in the chat that says, hi, I'm a fourth grader and I am part of the green ambassador at my school. I am learning a lot and can't wait to share at school. Thank awesome. you so much. We love to hear that. Yes, and That's actually awesome. our, our tours right now is a public tour. It's on the weekend, but we also have a tour program for any during the weekday. So during business, during school time for any school, I think fifth grade up to college level or any organization with group members of 10 or more, all free of charge. So. And I'll just throw this out there. Alex, if you drop your email, I will send you swag for your entire class. So oh, yay. Please drop your email and I'll send that right over. Well, I'll contact you and your parent and I can send that right over. Awesome. Um, all right, so the next question for Patricia Baker. Sometimes during the year, I see sidewalk drains covered with black mesh. Is there a reason for that? Yes. yes. No, you go ahead for you. Uh, if, usually that's to uh, keep the uh, larger items from going into the sewer. Uh, like we have them here for our uh, construction, when we have construction projects, uh, I believe we call them uh, BMPs. Uh, they're to keep any, you know, when they're doing construction, there's wood, there's nails, uh, screws, things that can fall into the sewer and plug up pumps and, and uh, damage equipment. So uh, those are, are kept in to keep out the unnecessary things that go, into, things that we don't want to go into the sewer. That's what they're for. It's basically a screen. It's just to screen out the uh, larger items. And, and if I can just add to what Courtney said, the storm drain system is separate from the sanitary sewer system. The, whereas the sanitary, the sewers, the sanitary system collects the water and treats right. it, and then it gets reused or discharged into another larger body of water. The storm drains flow directly out into the ocean. So they're putting probably the screen there to make sure that not, that trash doesn't end up in the ocean. All right. Any other questions, Genesis? Awesome. Yes. Sorry, I was just getting back to our fourth grade student. So, um, yes, is the water quality important after it has been treated, even though it is not being directly consumed by people? And does it get tested for harmful bacteria? I'm sorry. Is the water quality is, well, is the water quality that? important after it has been treated, even though it's not being directly consumed by people? And is it tested for harmful bacteria? Uh, yes, it is tested. Um, we do disinfect uh, the water with a sodium hypochlorite, which is kind of think of it as a uh, uh, industrial strength bleach. Um, so we do disinfect the water to get rid of any uh, bloodborne uh, pathogens that are in the water. Uh, as I understand it, it is drinkable and meets drinking standards. Uh, so yes, yeah, it is yeah. tested daily. And, <laughs> yeah, and uh, it is, oh, our F1 here is a very high quality. Uh, I believe other areas may have to, I think there's in the process of whether eventually this is gonna be a drinking source. For, to, to also add to Courtney's answer, we have a lab on site, San Jose Creek Lab is there and they kind of monitor, they test the water after every single step, including the effluent. 
even though it's not going to human consumption, um, we also make sure that it's no, it has no impact to the marine life where it does get discharged. So our lab kind of gives the seal of, a, they verify and they put the seal of approval in our process. They work, to, we work together with that. Shout out to the lab. I know you guys are out there, so. Uh, next question. Okay, next question. So, oh, and if you have not filled out the poll, please do so. It's just one question. And if you want to add additional feedback, please send an email at info at lacsd.org. It's, it's in the poll. Okay, so the next question we have here from our dear friend, Bobby. So uh, you spoke about toilet wastewater. Can you please speak to kitchen sink waste that can or should not go through the garbage disposal? Um, do you have an answer for it? I have something I want to say, but I don't know if you have one. Sure, go ahead. Oh, I've heard that um, eggshells and coffee grinds are actually not good for the sewers. They can kind of be abrasive. So that would be kitchen waste. I don't know if you've heard that in the plant. Uh, not, no, I haven't. Um, but as far, I mean, you put normal stuff in your in your sink. Uh, I think you'll be fine as long as you're not, you know, oils and uh, Fats. heavy oils. And, I mean, those come into the plant. If you, if you guys can remember back to the slide where uh, it showed all the that that form of grease and she was pointing out the different things that were on top of that water. It was a uh, paper and some other stuff. Um, the grease in there forms and sticks together and it makes these these big islands of just trash. So you know they have a name, right? They're called fatbergs. It's like oh, an iceberg made of fat, yeah. And I, I did not know that. <laughs> and there was actually, I know I'm getting all nerd mode, but there was actually a big fatberg in London and they had to send a crew to like chisel it out because it was blocking the, the sewers in this gym. But yeah, fatbergs are, uh, I mean, fats, oils, and grease, they also don't belong in the trash. I mean, in the sewers, they belong in the trash. And that actually, it's a good thing to give that PSA now because for the holidays, a lot of people are cooking and they can put the, the oils down the drain and it can cool. Yeah. And um, so protect your sewers. And, and and it'll help from clogging up your pipes too if you don't put oils in, in, in your Actually, pipes. Genesis, it may be a good time to give a PSA on HHW. What do you think about that? Yes, I was gearing up for it. So we have you know, to keep fats, oils, and grease from the drain and to keep all this other stuff that doesn't belong in the drain or belong in the trash, we have our wonderful and free household hazardous and electronic waste program. Here, it's a roundup that takes place in every city throughout LA County from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Today, our crew is out in the city of Duarte, um, next week, they'll be in Santa Clarita, then the week after that, or two weeks after that, they'll be in Laverne, then Whittier, Malibu, etc. So one different city throughout. Um, they're actually at Signal Hill slash Long Beach, like the first and third Saturday of every month. And but hold on, let me just tell you what we take. We take fluorescent light tubes, we take oil, we take um, used paints, we take uh, batteries, we take any electronics, so your computers, iPads, tablets, old cell phones, um, your sharps. If you have sharps, we have special drop-offs for sharps. Is there, is there anything else I'm missing? Yes, used cooking anything? oil. Used, used cooking, cooking oil. oil. It yeah. comes in so handy for Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah, so all of that, you can take it to a Roundup and they will take it straight from your trunk. It's like contactless, the way Target has their contact list pickup and I mean pickup we've been doing it since the 80s and it's an awesome program we love it and it's completely free so I'm going to put it on the chat our website where you can get more information and so we're in the Antelope Valley we're in Palmdale twice a month we're in Signal Hill slash uh, Long Beach twice a month the city of LA also has their own um, permanent locations throughout different parts of city of LA that are available every Saturday and they're available to all LA County residents. So if you go to that website, www.lacsd.org, you can find more information on where these, uh, where these roundups are located. But anything toxic, anything you think is too toxic to trash, Pretty much you can take it. And if you have a question, you can send us an email 
and we'll let you know if it's good to go or not. Um, one more thing I would, I would, I believe the question was back to you know, some things not to put down your sink. Uh, medicine as well, like uh, pills and when you're done with them. When you, uh, and you can take this, that to our, to our sites also too. Hazardous waste yeah. events too. So um, we have, let's see. So a set, another question, why do people use home water filters since tap water is already clean and tested? And are pitcher filters efficient or are they just snake oil? Quote unquote, snake oil. Um, Courtney, you go ahead. Well. Okay, so the question again, why do they use uh, home filters when tap water is, the standards are, are high quality? Uh, peace of mind, um, <laughs> they advertise it well. Um, also, you have to keep in mind too, uh, uh, pipes and infrastructure are always, you know, there's always corroding and stuff. If you pay attention to some of the things like uh, in Michigan that happened there. Um, they have high quality uh, water standards, but their pipes were in bad condition. Uh, you know, rust and all that kind of stuff is getting into their pipes. And that could be one of the reasons people uh, prefer to use home filters. And I know personally, some people prefer to use home filters because of the taste. The water may say, but yeah. you, you know, may not like the taste, so you might filter it too. Since you brought up infrastructure, Courtney, I don't know if you guys have hearing the news. They, they're going to pass. They're going to sign into a law an infrastructure bill to help us restore uh, infrastructure, water and wastewater infrastructure, and that's actually one of our biggest challenges. The sewers are underground; nobody can see them. It costs money to dig them up, but you do need to, you know, give them some TLC. So we're excited what this um, infrastructure bill can do, and we help us. I mean, we're doing our maintenance, but there's just you know, so much more you could be doing. So we are happy to see that, um, you know, take our take our stuff to the next level. Next question, Jennifer. So um, someone just wanted clarification on the Long Beach event slash Signal Hill, it's at ERCO. It's second and fourth Saturday. It is, so I clarified that in the chat. Thank you for catching that. So first and third Saturdays in Palmdale, and then second and fourth Saturdays in at Edco, which is in Signal Hill, border with Long Beach, and we have all these other um, all these other locations throughout LA County throughout the year. Um, and then someone asked, "How about needles? I help my grandma check her sugar levels, and where is the best place to put these used needles?" At our HHW events, you can keep them in a secure container um, while you pile some up, and then when you're ready to dispose of them. You can go to our website, www.lacsd.org slash HHW, and you can see where we're at. Usually we're always, even if we're not specifically in your city, there's always a nearby city or area close to your home that we're in, like within if a you, month. Yeah, and the, the, they're all open to any LA County resident. And if you follow us on social media, Instagram or uh, Facebook or Twitter, we're always posting when the next event will be. So it might not be in your city, but it could maybe it's close by that you can drive over. Yeah, it's always your place. So that was like a shameless, very discreet plug. I, for plug. I loved it. <laughs> Follow us on social, social media, media for the latest updates. Even we post HHW events, we post, we post any upcoming virtual tours. We also post a lot of jobs, right? Yes, yeah. we do. We yeah. post jobs and also we post, um, actually one of my favorite things to post are old pictures of what our sewer, or you know, it explains how, how far we've come. So us and our sewers that we built in the 20s, 30s, 50s, um, and people love to see those as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I think with that, I think that concludes our last question. I'm double checking it twice. Um, and I think that is our last question. So. Thank you everyone so much for coming. I'm gonna, I have us on gallery mode. So thank you so much for coming. We hope you had a great morning. I know I did. Um, I feel like we're connected now forever. Every time you go to the bathroom. When you flush, think of us. <laughs> anytime you flush, you're gonna think of us and the great time we had, or when you wash your dishes or do your laundry. I hope you think of us and you think of the journey that that water is going to take once you're done with it. And remember so, the three Ps. The four. The four. The four. The four. Sorry. The fourth one. I didn't know. Uh, yeah. The fourth one. Okay.
the four yeah see even courtney learned something i know we've done our job thank you thank Thank you thank you you can watch this video on youtube and we hope to see you on the next one we're going to be talking about the Puna hills materials recovery facility and i think the landfill no and our food food waste program next week and surprise i might be there so see you guys thanks again we do birthday parties you can hire us too (laughs) Okay, bye. Bye.